Whoever you speak to in the F1 paddock, everyone seems convinced Red Bull and Max Verstappen in particular will be the combination to beat when F1 2024 kicks off properly in Bahrain. But already there is one team emerging as their most credible challenger. That team isn't Mercedes, who finished second in the 2023 championship, or McLaren, who pushed Red Bull hardest on the high-speed circuits last season, nor is it Aston Martin, who started 2023 as Red Bull's biggest threat. When Verstappen takes a look in his mirrors next week, we expect his field of vision to be filled with Ferrari red. We weren't overly impressed by what we saw at Ferrari's 2024 F1 car launch. We were worried the overhaul undertaken by the team led by Enrico Cardile wasn't ambitious enough and that being an outlier among the leading teams on rear suspension configuration could trip Ferrari up. But on the evidence of pre-season testing, Ferrari has emerged as the most credible challenger to Red Bull and in this video we're going to explain why. Ferrari's test started well, with Carlos Sainz describing day one as an optimal day on track. That's because the car ran reliably, racking up 133 laps and, according to Sainz, working well immediately. The team also worked through an extensive setup range on day one and found the car reacted as hoped. That's always a positive sign. If anything, teammate Charles Leclerc was even more effusive. He recalled pre-season testing last year and realising after the first day of running that it was going to be a very long season. But big improvements in terms of what he calls the drivability, and for him that doesn't so much mean the power delivery and traction but more the actual ease of driving the car, mean he's feeling much more confident this year. Neither driver was proclaiming the Ferrari SF24 a world beater, but the important thing is it was consistent, responsive and did what was expected, and that feeling continued throughout the test. Sainz was quickest overall on the second day of running, but more importantly, he also completed a promising race simulation, of which more later. Cardile felt the running confirmed Ferrari has achieved one of its key objectives. He described that as making the car more drivable and predictable. Sainz and Leclerc split the running on day three and Leclerc ended the day with the fastest time. And while the paddock feeling is that the Red Bull is actually the fastest car, Ferrari's pace puts it in good shape for the season ahead. Team principal Fred Vasseur was cautious about the car's pace, but felt that the better feeling in the car for both drivers was the big positive. It's one thing to hear what the team and its drivers say about their new car once it's been driven, but what they can't disguise is how the car looks when observed up close from trackside. Here's why our man Scott Mitchell Mao came away from Bahrain with a very good feeling about the Ferrari after watching it closely on the final afternoon. I'm back from my final trackside visit of pre-season testing and I have to say the Ferrari has left a really big impression, arguably the best impression of any car other than the Red Bull. It has passed the eye test every time myself or one of my colleagues has gone trackside to view these cars driving around in anger. There's a certain poise to the Ferrari. It's not, it can tuck the front in quite nicely on, on entry. It's through corner balance, looks steady, and it looks planted on the exit under traction. So a lot to like that it seems to be doing what the drivers want and, and need it to do. It looks a clear step on from, from last year. Charles Leclerc said that was the worst test of his career 12 months ago. That's not the feeling from Ferrari. Now, is it good enough to beat or just even challenge the Red Bull? That is hard to say, and, and maybe not, but we're a bit more optimistic that there is going to be a car that can make things a little bit Bit more interesting. They say it is the hope that kills you, but it's better to have some hope than none. Last year's Ferrari was a tricky car. It suffered from rear end instability and often had too much understeer. This meant that one of the key ways Ferrari intended to improve the predictability was to achieve more stable and consistent aerodynamic performance. One of the big tests of this came on day one, which was a gusty day. Ferrari had hoped to experience those conditions to evaluate whether, as hoped, the car was less wind sensitive. Such conditions can lead to shifts in aerodynamic behavior and outright stalls, costing downforce in an unpredictable way. However, both drivers felt this was a good step forward from 2023. This is important because it suggests Ferrari has indeed fixed one of the key weaknesses of last year's car. That was a process that started last June with its Spanish Grand Prix upgrade and continued throughout the season, although it was always expected to need the new SF24 to eliminate the problem. A better balanced and more consistent car should also be a big advantage when it comes to better tyre management and therefore improved race pace. Leclerc certainly believes that is the case. So this is all positive for Ferrari. It appears to have cured its big vices from last year and built on the good work done in the second half of 2023 in improving the car. Now it's simply a question of how much pace the car really has and whether the improved understanding will ensure a high rate of development through the season ahead.
Beyond the eye-catching headline lap times Ferrari set on days 2 and 3 of this test, what do we find when we delve beneath the surface? A pace comparison with the Red Bull requires some assumptions on our part, chiefly the presupposition that Red Bull and Ferrari use the same base weight for their low fuel laps. This admittedly might not be the case, but recent history suggests the two teams actually do run quite a similar fuel load, and we derive this from any variation in how they have qualified in the opening races compared to their calculated pre-season testing performance. In 2023 Bahrain qualifying, the gap between the fastest car of those two teams was quite similar to how it looked in testing. The patterns over the last couple of seasons suggest that Mercedes and McLaren run slightly heavier with their base weights in testing and Aston Martin slightly lighter. That may not necessarily be the case in 2024 of course, but it's the best we have to go on. There was also considerable variation in test programs, but Red Bull and Ferrari both attempted some form of race simulation run, giving us further clues. But let's look first at single lap pace. Everything we've seen so far suggests the new Ferrari is decently quick over one lap, just like last year's car, which qualified fastest of all six times amid a season of otherwise total Red Bull domination. If we correct the times for the estimated six tenths of a second delta between the C4 tyre Ferrari used to set its quickest times on days two and three, and the C3 tyre with which the Red Bull drivers set their best lap times, that places sights a tenth up on Perez on day two, and Leclerc two tenths behind Verstappen on day three. But that gap between Leclerc and Verstappen on the final day, the most relevant here considering they are their respective team's fastest drivers, extends to four tenths when you allow for the fact Verstappen set his time on a used set of tyres compared to the new ones Leclerc had. We estimate about two tenths of a second then blankets Ferrari, Mercedes, McLaren and Aston Martin, with Mercedes very close to Ferrari at the head of that pack but, like in 2023, taking much longer to home in on the correct setup and tyre temperature to achieve that lap time. But single lap pace wasn't Ferrari's chief weakness in 2023, it was the race stints where they tended to come unstuck thanks to the car being so unpredictable and eating its tyres, and in this aspect they seem to have made some genuine progress. A comparable race simulation between the Ferrari, driven by Sainz, and the Red Bull, driven by Perez, on day two, using the hardest three tyre compounds at a similar time of day, made the Ferrari look suspiciously good, suggesting Sainz would have beaten Perez by a full minute over the 57 lap distance. It's extremely unlikely the Ferrari is one second per lap faster than the Red Bull over a race distance, but that's what the day two numbers indicate, so perhaps the Red Bull was running a higher fuel load than the Ferrari, or maybe the fact Red Bull had lots of cooling vents open on the car meant Perez was having to run a bit down on power compared to the Ferrari. Leclerc only did two thirds of a race run on the final day, but comparing to Verstappen's Red Bull, they look pretty much on the same pace. So unlike in 2023, at this stage, it looks like the Ferrari has maybe sacrificed a bit of one lap speed to get much closer to Red Bull over a race distance. For most of this test, our journalists on the ground agonized over who was genuinely looking like the best of the rest. The more people we spoke to inside teams and among other observers, the more we heard a similar tale, that it looked like a group of anywhere from three to five teams. In no particular order, Ferrari, Mercedes and McLaren were consistently named in the group, with Aston Martin and even RB mentioned as well. RB was always mentioned at the tail of that group at best, but for the rest, trying to pick a favourite looked like throwing a dart at a dartboard while the dartboard was moving. But then Ferrari moved to the fore and none of the other teams really moved with it. The Aston Martin has at times left as good an impression trackside but not in lap time, even though we don't know what anyone's doing for fuel and engine modes. It also didn't look quite as strong as a late long run progressed compared to Ferrari or even McLaren. Speaking of McLaren, it and Mercedes came with their own question marks. Lando Norris described McLaren as a long way behind Red Bull and also Ferrari and over the longer runs the car appeared to be suffering quite badly with tyre degradation. McLaren Racing CEO Zach Brown also told us in a brief paddock catch up that he reckons Ferrari's at the head of that group. So McLaren's public stance at least is that it does not believe it is ahead of Ferrari and for what it's worth Daniel Ricciardo who has ruled his own RB team out of being really in the best of the rest fight reckons Ferrari stands alongside Red Bull as a sure thing to fight for the podium. As for the Mercedes it occasionally looked like a handful even though it seems to clearly be in a better place than 12 months ago and neither driver was pretending this car is ready to challenge Red Bull. While Mercedes end of season test appraisal was probably the most emphatically positive they've been in this rules era, it still came with the caveat that they are stressing they know they have to add more performance. 
So it seems at this stage, allowing for the Red Bull being the clear leader, the Aston Martin lacks a touch of pure pace, the McLaren is struggling with tyre management, and Mercedes, for whom long run data is lacking, are able to pretty much match Ferrari over a single lap, but only after taking pretty much the entire three day test to dial in the car's setup. For Ferrari, everything has come together that much easier, which is why that car looks to be the one Red Bull are most likely to see coming when they look over their shoulders. 